Great. What's up, guys? Aeong Bassoonist here uh, with a brand new episode of Musician Mode, and I am joined here by Miss Catherine Chan. Thank you, Catherine, for being here, and uh, feel free to Hello. give yourself a little introduction. Hi, everyone. My name is Catherine Chen. I'm the principal bassoon of the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra. Unfortunately, the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra season's canceled, but um, we're still trying to make the music live on. Yeah, and I actually, I've seen some of your Facebook posts that you've done with uh, other musicians, other bassoonists to be specific, so I can see that you're still trying to keep the motivation of music to go on. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I think this pandemic, it's, it's going to take a while, but it's not going to stop us from trying to, you know, do what we love to do. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I think even we're fortunate that we live in a day and age like this during this time, because as much as, yeah, all these things got canceled, we still have technology to be able to uh, produce content and music that, uh, that makes us happy and uh, we're able to Still present that to the world so i think it's fortunate that we live in this day and age with technology right exactly and i mean we're fortunate enough to be able to even connect like this and mm -hmm. you know with zoom calls and um you know so make music remotely from home yeah so. <laughs> um with our eyes i um <laughs> yeah i'm actually um leading the social media committee for the Milwaukee Symphony musicians. And so um, I'm very active on social media with the Facebook page and the Instagram page. And mm. we're always trying to um, keep current, stay current and yeah. put out content and, you know, brighten people's lives and connect with our community even um, when we can't go back on stage right now. But we will be back on stage. Mm -hmm. And I, I respect that because I think that's very inspirational to people who, you know, are having down times. You know, I'm sure there, there are lots of uh, high school seniors, you know, uh, college seniors that will never get to make that final performance that it, for, at the school they are. And I'm sure uh, it, it, it could be depressing. And for musicians like you uh, who are producing content for those guys to watch. I mean, I'm sure you could lighten their day up. So, um, I mean, huge respect to you guys to put in that work. But um, oh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I think the big heroes are the 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 people on the front lines. For sure, and I mean, it it's it's never going to be forgotten and never going to be looked past um, because uh, I mean, they're working hard uh, and they're risking their lives. Some of them are on the on. Uh, on the edge and so uh we got to give respect to them and uh it, it's all for them you know so mm -hmm. uh, but uh yeah. aside from that uh let's get right into talking about you so um i think the first topic i wanted to talk about is uh heritage you know you are of asian uh, heritage and ethnicity and uh, as as i am and you were born in taiwan if i'm not mistaken correct right? And you moved here at age six, according yeah. to your bio. Uh, and um, <laughs> you know, yep. I I think when we, you know, when people think about like Asians in the music community, I think as much as it is bad, there are a lot of stereotypes about um, you know we like you know we're very musical and we like play piano, we play like violin or something. Um, and I think that as much as that's a stereotype, it sort of is true um because i learned piano when i was at a young age you actually learned was playing cello right before bassoon i, I learned playing piano and cello yeah and <laughs> okay so um you know i think and uh wow you, you got the double whammy there um and you know i think there are certain standards that um as you know being asian you being taiwanese uh, me being Japanese, there are different standards that will be held to us um, versus, you know, maybe American culture or European culture. And so I wanted to ask you, um, how do you think that, you know, with your cultural background, how it would affect, how it affected you as both a musician and as a person, 
uh, in a good or bad way. Uh, but yeah, how did it affect you? Well, growing up in Taiwan until I was six, I was already, you know, immersed in music at a very young age. I have two older siblings mm -hmm. and they were also, um, they actually were in a music private school and wow. you have to audition to get in to, mm -hmm. you know, to enter first grade. And so by the time I was like three years old, I um, was taking Yamaha classes and mm -hmm. practicing how to draw the treble clef and the bass clef and and um, you know dictation, um, and you know just following what my siblings were doing, and so uh, I started piano when I was four, and then cello when I was five, and then I auditioned for this uh, private school and got in, but then I immediately moved to the states. Um, so I didn't get as much of like a musical education in Asia as my siblings did but I think the language itself like Mandarin um, and because it's very tonal that also helped develop my ear um, it helped me I think with perfect pitch I don't like to say that I have perfect pitch but I have pitch memory in a way uh -huh. um, where I can I know what the notes are but you know I Sometimes I don't think like I, I, I can't tell if that's oh that's like 16 cents flat or something. Mm. Uh, I think there are varying degrees of mm -hmm. pitch perfectness and um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm definitely not I'm on the spectrum, but <laughs> not like very strong. I think. Um, I see. But but yeah, the you know the the language really helps, and I learned solfege since I was three and so you know I was already singing in solfege at a very young age um, and I think when you know when you start young you you just have a really strong musical background especially starting fundamentals on the piano and you're hearing chords and you're he and you can visually see how scales and um, you know um, yeah, all of it lines how, up. How and, the harmony and mm -hmm. yeah, all of that stuff. Yeah, uh, I I think it's interesting that you brought up how Mandarin also helped you with pitch because I know that it's depending on like how you say it within like right. It's kind of yeah. depending on how you like raise the pitch or lower the pitch that changes the actual meaning of the word or yeah right? exactly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think that's really interesting that you brought that up. Um, and I, I like think about it, I'm like, huh, yeah, that actually would be a, a great advantage to, um, to your ear. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, I mean, power to you that, <laughs> that you uh, had the opportunity to, uh, or, or had the knowledge of that language. So cool. Um, that's, that's actually really interesting. Um, and uh, so, for instance, um, you know, for like a character like Ma, um, in English, I guess you can say, you know, Ma, Hey Ma, mm -hmm. or Hey Hey Ma, um, and, but it's still the same word. But then in in Chinese, if it's if you're saying Ma, it means something else. That's in Ma and Ma 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 Ma. They all mean differently. And yeah. I think you have to like have the ear to really discern like oh that's you're talking you're saying this word and you're saying mm -hmm. this word and <laughs> so and that's, that's the reason why I don't learn that language <laughs> um, okay so that's uh, cool um, and uh, so the next thing I want to talk about is uh, your success and your career um, I think it's amazing that you're a principal bassoonist and you are the the highlight thing that when I was meeting you or going to meet you the highlight thing they're talking about is you know you're the first Asian American female to receive a principal chair in the United States. Oh my gosh. <laughs> is, I, I, I mean I think that's awesome because one representing females so that's super awesome and then also representing Asian Americans which is another fantastic thing so two bonus points for you um, <laughs> um but i mean 
<laughs> your principal chair, <laughs> which I don't think is easy to get to. And, um, you know, I think, uh, I guess this also ties into the, the last question, but, you know, through your work um, and as, you know, at, from, I guess, high school or college and up until now, did you at all see yourself in this position or uh, did this, is this something that you think just kind of happened through your hard work? Okay. Um, well, I definitely, starting from freshman year of high school, this was something that I, I wanted to do. Like mm -hmm. I, I went to, I grew up in Connecticut um, and I was going to Juilliard pre-college on Saturdays. And um, I just totally immersed myself into classical music and um, I pushed myself really hard. I, um, and then, you know, freshman year of high school, I went to see a New York Philharmonic concert and they were doing Bartok Concerto for Orchestra. And I just remember the glamor of it all, like walking up onto Lincoln Center and then, you know, there's, the the fountain and then the Met and then um, Avery Fisher Hall to your right and you know when you walk in there's the red carpet and then all of the photographs on the wall and then as you and then when you step into the you know the audience and then you hear the orchestra warming up I I was just I gasped I was like so impressed I was enamored and and then when I heard um, Judy Leclerc playing the, oh, <laughs> the, the second movement of Bartok Concerto for Orchestra, I was like, done. I'm, I want to do this for the rest of my life. And yeah. <laughs> so that kind of just pushed me into that direction and like nothing could have stopped me. <laughs> um, yeah, and then so all of high school during, during breaks, um, if I had a class that, um, if I had a block period that was free, you know, most, a lot of people, uh, a lot of students my age were, you know, just hanging out, you know, in the, um, like the student center or something, yeah. you know, uh, or they would go to study hall. And then instead I went to the band room and, <laughs> and just started <laughs> practicing for an hour, you know, uh -huh, um, just sure. here and there. I was like, oh, I have time now. Okay, this is when I'm going to play. And, um, and I was also very, um, very diligent with my studies. And I, I made sure that, you know, my, my grades were good. My mom was also very, um, she made sure of that. <laughs> and well, I'm sure that a little bit of the uh, Asian instinct is like, do good in school. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of like expected and um, right. drilled. And, and so I, I just, I grew up with a really strong work ethic and, mm -hmm. um, and that also carried into the way I, I pursued music. And then, um, yeah, and then I, I went to Curtis, um, went there for five years. I mean, I definitely could not have seen myself knowing, like, where this, this would all take me. You know, no one knows. It's, it's all uncertain. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, when you, when you take auditions, you, you just have to go for it. You know, it's like entering the lottery. And, and, um, you know, you can't win on, you can never win unless you buy a ticket. That's so you, true. you kind of have to just go all in. Um, but there's like, I mean, I, I truly believe when hard work meets luck and they, when they meet, um, you know, you'll always end with a good result. Yeah. Um, um and I, I mean, it, it really sounds like when I read your resume and when, you know, when I hear about your, all the things and hear you as a bassoonist, I mean, it's, it here, it sounds like there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. And, um, and I, I'm, yeah, the results show that, um, it, like with luck and hard work, you get the results. Um, and I, I do believe that. Um, cause sometimes hard as you could work as hard as you want, but, 
uh, you know, life is life and uh, sometimes they don't pick the hardworking person. So you got to get like lucky yeah. sometimes, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Which when the uh, stars are aligned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that uh, I I do agree with that. Um, but wonderful. Um, and I mean, you are a really good bassoonist. Uh, you you have a great sound. I love your sound. Actually, it's one of my favorite. Oh, sounds thank you. On a bassoon, uh, you have a nice whole dark tone that I think uh, is it's just really wonderful. Um, and, thank you. I appreciate uh, that. Yeah. Um, so. A good job for getting this far and hope that uh, there's only more success at the end of the road for you. Um, <laughs> uh, so. Thank you. Um, you too. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I'll try. Uh, <laughs>